Hello, I'm Scott Hanna. Welcome to the Arts and Fashion Institute. Today, I'll be teaching you how to draw light and shadow, specifically core shadow. What is a core shadow? A core shadow is a dark shadow in between two different light sources. You can see it right here on my face. Uh, one of the most famous examples of it in fine art is Matisse's painting, The Green Stripe. You can see very clearly that there's a dark shadow line in between two different uh, colors of light on the two different sides of face. Generally, when we're dealing with core shadow, we have unequal light sources, meaning one light source is stronger and one is slightly weaker, and then the shadow is the darkest area in the middle. To understand core shadow, we're going to start with some very simple forms and see how light and shadow works. So we're going to start with a basic circle shape. And whenever we have a circle, we want to find out where the main light source is. So the predominant light we're going to have coming in from this direction, we're going to have a secondary or reflected light coming in from this side. That means that we usually have an arc of a shadow coming in between the two light sources. Generally, the darkest section is between the two, going along the plane of the arc of the circle. And then it's slightly darker as it goes to the shadow side. And then it's lighter as it gets to the highlight side. We also will have a cast shadow, possibly on both sides. And we could even see if we actually added a light source, we would have the brightest light on one side of this form. So this core shadow is what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, we use this on much more complex shapes. Uh, when we're dealing with a human form, we have a lot of circular shapes on the human body. We also have a lot of what we call cylindrical shapes, and light works a little bit differently on a cylinder. So when you're dealing with a cylinder, you've got a rounded top and bottom, and you've got relatively straight sides. This would be like a neck or an arm. When you've got a light source coming in on this and a secondary light source coming here, what happens is the predominant light source takes up more space. So the darkest shadow is off-center. If center is here, the shadow is closer to one side than the other. This is a dark line. If we just leave it like this, this is how I would draw it in a comic book. I might leave it open for the colorist to add something like a cool light from one side and a warm light from the other side. Um, we can also start shading this in to show it's a little bit darker. We can shade, soften the edges a little bit. And also when we're adding in the highlight side, we're bringing the highlight also in from the outer edge. So the highlight is actually inside the form, not on the edge of the form. These are two of the most basic examples of how to use a core shadow. Next, we're going to start showing how to use it on a very complex form, like the human head or human body. This is an ink drawing I did, uh, obviously of a lion. You can see there's a very dark core shadow in the middle of his face. It's almost like that green stripe Matisse painting. This is indicating that there's one light source coming this way, one light source coming this way. Uh, if you see at the main, you can see that one side is lighter than the other side. That would indicate that the primary or the stronger light source is on our right, the weaker light source is over here. When I finish this drawing, I actually did line work to fill in the darker light side. This is still light, but it's more, uh, faded. It's a lesser light. So this becomes the brighter side. This is the lesser light side. And in between all of them, we get three major planes of the head. Now we're going to deal with a bit more complex of a subject. We're dealing with the human head. This is actually a sketch I did of Batman. I already started blocking in some of the forms. And I'm going to be inking this as we talk so that you can very clearly see what's happening and how the forms are defined, how we actually suggest planes, how we hide certain things, and how altogether it makes an image really pop. So the first thing we're going to do when we're starting the form is I'm just going to do the basic outlines. 
So I'm just going to get the basic outline shapes of the form. And you can see Batman has his obvious ears, the pointy ears. He's got his jaw. He's got the cape elements. And I'm just going to suggest some of the features of his cowl, of his mask. This is so we have some basic ideas of what the shapes are. We're going to highlight his eyes. And we're going to suggest where his mouth is as well. So you can see this is the bare bones of how we start a drawing. We're actually just getting the very basic shapes. We're not doing anything complex yet. We're just getting the placement of the features, the nose, the eyes, the mouth. Now we want to enhance this. We want to make this pop. So we're going to start adding in the shadows. When we start blocking in the shadows, I say blocking in because we're going to be taking big shapes. We're going to be taking large areas, turning them into solid black to make it very obvious what is the core shadow between the two light sources. In this case, we're having light coming in from both sides of the head, so I'm going to make this very simple, almost make it even, that it's almost a center core shadow with almost two equivalent light sources. So that means that the first thing we're going to do is take a very broad brush and start blocking in some of the strong center shadows. The nose sticks out from the face, so it gets a very strong shadow shape. The cheeks actually get more shadow involved in them. So we're going to block in parts of the mask that start showcasing, showcasing The cheeks are also a large flat area that creates a lot of dense shadows. So we're going to be filling in large sections of shadow on the cheeks, on the forehead, and above the eyes. So that means the whole center section of the forehead gets to be black. But one thing to be aware of is you want to break up and make these shadow forms interesting shapes. You don't want it to be all simple shapes. You want to actually give it some curves. You want to give it some jags. You want to give it some sharp edges. The more variety you give these shapes, the more interesting the shapes become. The shadows become much more enhancing of the form when you create interesting jigs and jags. You can see I'm outlining the shape first to make sure it's an interesting form. Then I literally just have to fill this in with solid blacks. And you can see how the form is starting to come together. I haven't done too much on the lower face yet. That's the more complex shapes. But we get a lot of form going on. I'm going to start going on the other eye to start balancing it out. I don't want the shapes on both sides of the head to be the same. I want them to have some variation. I want them to be slightly different. So I'm going to be highlighting slightly different planes. So in this case, I'm going to do the shadow underneath the eyebrow instead of above like I did on the other side. Give a little bit more variation in here. Now I'm going to start working on the lower face where we start seeing some real detail. The mask can be very simplified. The lower face, you start seeing a real lips, you start seeing a real jaw. So we're going to actually enhance the form of the nose shadow. And one of the things we do with shadows, especially when we're dealing with something like a core shadow, is we can cover up information. So I can actually start covering up the whole center of the mouth. I do not need to see every single bit of the features. 
I can actually hide certain elements. Frequently, the more you hide elements, the more realistic, the cooler it actually looks. And I'm starting to tie in some of the shadows from the upper mask into the lower face. You can see I'm still using very big forms here. And again, I want to have some slight variation between the two sides. I don't want them to be mirror images. I want them to be uh, having some variation. This makes for a more dynamic image if you change the shapes from one side to the other. Now we can see I'm actually blending the blacks from the chin right into the neck forms. And again, I want to have some breaks in the darks. I want to have some interesting shapes. So it's not just a column down the center of the neck. I want to break it up a little bit. I can add some things like wrinkles of fabric. I can enhance the musculature. I can start showing the folds of the cloak. So as we build this, we want to have certain sections where we can actually have dynamic shapes. So I can have a shadow that's just floating in its own se section, surrounded by dark on either side. And again, I can add some differences between the two sides. And as we build this, you see how by solidifying all these dark areas, making them very strong, interesting shapes, the whole piece feels very solid and very strong. This is the simplified shadows. I can get a little bit more subtle. We'll be getting to that in a minute where I soften some of the border edges. So one of the things we do when we're using shadows is we frequently connect shadow pieces. So you can see how the mask is connecting here. I'm actually going to go ahead and connect the nose shape into the upper lip area so that unifies the form. It makes them look much darker and more mysterious when you add or when you touch the shadows together. Where shadows connect, it becomes much more cohesive and stronger. So we actually call these positive and negative shapes. The light is usually the positive shape. The dark area of shadow is the negative shape. So you can see how already this drawing looks very complete. We have a lot of form. We have a lot of drama. We have a lot of darkness, mood. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to soften some of the edges to give those rounder forms. Uh, I want to emphasize which side is the stronger light source. In this case, I would probably pick this side because I have more light area on this side of the cape, more dark area on this side of the cape. So that means I'm also going to add a little bit more dark over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to soften some of these forms and have them gray out a little bit. That means they're going to have a little bit of feathering. But I'm going to keep it mostly on the slightly darker side. I can add some areas of actual gray. I can do lighting inside the shadow forms. And you notice I'm also changing direction of the line to fit the planes of the face. So this softens some of the edges, gives it a little bit more roundness in certain areas. I can do the same thing in the cape.
And now we have a very good indication of where the blacks belong. I can also really in pop this even more. I can say I'm going to actually add some shadows behind him. Again, it's okay to connect some of these shadows together. Now, because this is Batman, I could do buildings back here. I could do any kind of abstract shapes. I could just do a Batman shadow. I can do anything I like to create some basic Gotham City type forms. A lot of times we darken different windows. But all of these are just abstract shapes to help highlight the form of the main character. As a final touch, I can start adding some of the light zones. As I mentioned, I want the left side to be primarily light. The right side will be slightly darker. So I'm not going to really touch anything. I'll let the gray paper be the midtones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some highlights into the light side. Even though this is a dark mask, he's still going to have some areas of highlight. I don't have to fill up the entire space. I'm going to treat the light areas similar to how I treated the black areas in that I want the light areas to have interesting forms. You notice also I'm bringing it slightly inside the form so it doesn't touch the outline. Now on the lower face, it's actually a lighter value so I can add a bit more light to this area. And the nose usually has a strong light on it because it does stick out from the face quite a bit. And there you have the light, strong light source, core shadow, secondary light source, and a finished Batman drawing.